my dear students and viewers this is pranjay bishwas professor and chairman department of english dhaka college affiliated with the university of dhaka i welcome you to my today's lecture on two daffodils written by robert harry my today's topic is the critical appreciation of the poem to daffodils my dear students at first let me mention the genre the genre of this poem is that it is a short lyric poem belonging to the school of cavalier poems in fact robert hurry belong to the cavalier poets as well as the sons of Ben, and this poem is a short lyric poem. Its style is simple. It is subjective, and uh, if I want to discuss the point of view, I, I can say that the poet speaks in the first person. we representing all human beings here we find also the use of the second person you that refers to the daffodils or all beautiful things on earth which are transitory now what is the setting of the poem to explain the setting referring to the place i can say that it may be a field or a garden full of daffodils and the time when the poet speaks may be either morning or any time before the noon because the daffodils bloom early in the morning but fade before the noon Now, what is the structural feature of the poem? We find two stanzas or parts in the poem. The first stanza contains ten lines with various lengths. The second stanza also consists of further ten lines. with irregular length of ten lines my students now what is the phonological feature of the poem the rhyme and rhythm of the poem can be defined to be very much pleasant to hear it and we find the end rhyme in the poem and if i want to discuss the rhyme scheme of the poem i can uh, say that there is the rhyme scheme a b c b d d c e and a e that is the first the first word c with the sound e is rhymed with the word we that is to see and we are rhymed together again soon that is the b is rhymed with noon soon and noon that is the second line is rhymed with the fourth line father there is sun and also ram that is the third line is rhymed with the seventh line 
that is ram and sa that is c and c again we can find stay stay that is d again hasting day stay and day that is d and d stay is rhymed with day father you can see song song is rhymed with along that is e and e so thus we can explain that the poem the two stanzas have the same rhyme pattern that is end rhyme here you can also see a b c b d d c e and at last a e in the same way we can explain the rhyme scheme here okay and the lines are of various length and irregular meter has been used in this poem in fact this poem is very short in length as our life is also short like the daffodils then we can also explain the language and syntactic feature of the poem the language of this poem is very simple vivid lucid and clear and we find most of the words are monosyllabic okay and the sentences are very short and simple and we can say that most of the sentence though short are pregnant with meaning and grammatically most of the sentences are correct my dear students now semantic feature if i go to discuss the semantic feature of the poem i can say that there are two levels of meanings in the poem the first is the surface meaning and the second is the deeper meaning or underlying meaning the first stanza in fact expresses the surface meaning of the poem why we find that the poet sees the beautiful daffodils instead of being delighted the poet is very sad and melancholy because he can't enjoy the beauty of the daffodils for a longer time because the daffodils bloom early in the morning and wither before the noon by this i mean that the life of the daffodils is very short and hence the poet can't dream the beauty of the daffodils for a long time so in the first stanza the poet just tells us the short lasting life of the beauty of the daffodils that makes the poet sad and weep but in the second stanza we find the deeper meaning which is highly philosophical and what is the deeper meaning or underlying meaning of the poem here the poet has compared human beings <coughs> sorry with the daffodils the transitoriness of the daffodils reminds the poet of the transitoriness of human youth and mortality of life inevitable death comes and takes us away from this beautiful world to the world of death 
and the second stanza focuses that human beings enjoy a short span of youth then every man grows old meets decay and final death just like the summer sun or the pulse of morning's dew and never to be found again so the main concern of robert henry is to expose the crucial truth of life who is is transient and this makes the boy sad and melancholy my dear students we also find a rhetorical feature in this poem full of many figures of speech in fact figures of speech add some extra ornament and beauty to the poem a lot of figures of speech you can find here such as apostrophe or at the point at this in the apostrophe we find personification where the poet represents daffodils to be living beings not only that he also personifies the sun yeah we also find here symbol such as the spring is the symbol of youth happiness and pleasure of life it symbolizes the golden period of life in human being <clears throat> next we also find simile and metaphor the poet has compared human life as short as the short span of the daffodils and like the summer sun as well as the pulse of morning's dew so all these are the figures of space called simile we also find metaphor when the poet compares dew drops to pulse without the use of as or like so the comparison the implicit comparison between pearls and morning's dew is called metaphor we also find a uh, alliteration as well as assonance in this poem when the poet says we we so here is alliteration the repetition of the same sound in the beginning of two neighboring words again stay stay so s and s at the beginning of the two words are repeated so alliteration means the repetition of the same sound in the beginning of two or more close neighboring words we also find assonance assonance means the repetition of the same vowel sounds in closely related words for example when you say stay a again a stay here is a in the same way we can find hasting day here is the repetition of a and again day a so we can find assonance and alliteration in this poem my dear student what is the tone of the poem of course the tone of the poem is sad and melancholy that 
makes the poet weep thinking of the short life of human beings now what is the position of the poet what is the author's position in this poem author's position means the poet's opinion about the subject matter dealt with in the poem the poet's position is that the poet thinks human life is very short like all other beautiful things on earth so he his opinion is that our life is short the world is beautiful love is splendid splendid and the short time we have must make of best of use and this is the carpe diem theme by this carpe diem theme the message of this poem is the carpe diem theme by this robert herrick wants to say that our life is short and the world is beautiful love is splendid so what to do the short time that we have on earth should be made uh, should be made and utilized properly and by this proper utilization of the present time of life we can make it meaningful and significant so let us sing of life and let us drink life to the least thank you see you again all the best